Just when you thought you were in the clear, Ran Carthen said, hold my beer. That's right. You're looking at Will Levis because the Titans decided it was in their best interest to draft the quarterback in the second round. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not entirely stoked about this move. I don't really understand it. I really thought after day one, we were going to ignore the quarterback draft rumors and we were going to play it safe. We were going to do the right thing, right? We grabbed Peter Skaronsky. Maybe we'd go get a receiver today. Maybe get Hendon Hooker later. Uh Uh-uh. Not only did they draft Will Levis, they traded up to go get him. And I'm confused. Yes, he's the prototype. He looks great. I'm not sold on him. And I don't understand if you're not going to, if you don't think he's worth grabbing at number 11 in the first round, why are you trading up in the second round to go get him? This is what the trade looked like, the trade I'm talking about. They did trade with the Cardinals. They will get Will Levis, obviously, with that draft pick. They got the second round pick at 33 overall, and they will now draft at 81 in the third round later this evening. The Cardinals get 41. 72, as well as next year's third round pick. I'm not happy about it. Honestly, if I'm being nice, I'll give the grade, I'll I'll grade it a C. I will grade this move a C. Let me know what you think. I know this fan base is split. We have talked a lot about the quarterbacks in this draft class. Will Levis's name has come up multiple times, and people weren't high on him. We knew that Rand Carthen met with him. We knew that he was having meetings, and they liked his arm, and he looked like a good quarterback. But nobody was completely sold on Will Levis. And I think the fan base now kind of seeing mixed reactions, but mostly everyone I've seen hates it. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Grade the pick. Explain why, if you're heated, unleash. I like to read that kind of stuff. Let's kind of look at his scouting report. Like I said, he is a prototype quarterback, right? He's strong. He's mobile. He's probably got one of the strongest arms, if not the strongest arm in this draft. Anthony Richardson kind of up there as well, but he went with the Colts yesterday in round one. Like we thought Will Levis would go. Instead, he's day two. He actually... Uh, decided he wasn't even going to go to the draft today. I don't know if that's an ego check or what that was, but he's not there. However, he is now a Titan. He did have a toe injury this past season that kept him out for two games. There's word on the street that a surgery could be in the foreseeable future. That's still kind of up in the air. I will give him the benefit of the doubt saying that he didn't have a great um, offense over in Kentucky, so maybe Given some weapons and some protection, he can do a little bit better. He had a 65.4 completion percentage, 2,400 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Hello, can you say hi to Ryan Tannehill 2.0? Because he's actually similar to Ryan Tannehill in the aspect of, yeah, he's athletic. He goes a lot over the middle, play action, all that kind of stuff. Like I said, this guy looks good. He's chiseled. He's cut. He looks like the big, strong quarterback that you want running your offense. And I will say, smart kid. Had a lot of Ivy League offers. I'm not knocking him for that. What I'm knocking him for, let me rephrase this. What I'm knocking Rand Carson for right now is choosing a quarterback that struggles with accuracy, consistency, and decisiveness. You're looking for your future quarterback, your franchise quarterback, and you decide to go with a quarterback who looks good on the outside but hasn't quite gotten down the accuracy, consistency, and decisiveness part? Are you kidding me? We're just moving out of the Ryan Tannehill phase where people will argue that he is very mid, okay? He's gotten through, but he hasn't led this team to a successful postseason. We're trying to elevate this. You looked at Malik Willis last year, third round. You were hoping he was the guy he proved this year he's not. By the way, don't be surprised if Malik Willis isn't on the roster uh, in the coming days or maybe down the line. But you go out and grab a quarterback. He has not proven himself, and I get it. Before you tell me to shush up, give him a chance, he's a rookie, I understand that. But if you have a guy coming in that looks good, he's smart, but he makes silly mistakes and he can't make decisions and you're asking him to become the franchise quarterback because the guy you have now is on his way out? What are we doing? I thought after we got out of day one, Rand Carthen knows what he's doing, right? And granted, he's a GM, I'm not. Okay, maybe he does know what he's doing, but I'm not on the same page as him. 
I thought we were like, okay, we're going to play it out with Ryan Tannehill. We'll go get somebody like Caleb Williams in 2024. We're going to go get a quarterback we know can lead this team. Mm -mm. We waited till day two. Not only did we wait till day two, we traded up to go get a quarterback. Let me calm down while I take a breath, kind of a... Uh, Calm myself down. I'm getting a little red and loud in this microphone. I'm surely blowing y'all's ears out if you've got AirPods in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Not only do we keep you informed, we keep it real. Clearly, I'm not happy about the pick. I'm going to let you know about it, but that's my job, to make sure that you get all of the information, whether it's good or bad. Maybe you like the move. I don't. Subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you updated all throughout the draft, all the rounds throughout the whole weekend. Make sure you sub. This is what The Athletic says about Will Levis. Look, Levis needs more reps to continue developing his read efficiency and ball placement, but he has an NFL starter skill set, excuse me, skill set with his impressive physical tools, size, arm, athleticism, and exceptional competitive toughness. Those are skills I like. I will not knock him for that. I get, again, he's got the potential. He is the prototype quarterback, okay? He's smart. He's tough. I get it. I need to see the accuracy come out, the consistency. You've got to be able to make decisions in the backfield when the pressure's coming because let's touch on that while this is on the screen. Look at the needs on this roster. You just grabbed a quarterback who may or may not be able to be the guy in 2024, but now you're putting all your chips in, hoping. You still haven't fixed the receiver room. The O-line could or could not be ready to go for the season. And your pasty still needs some fine-tuning as well. You just got rid, you just traded back and got rid of a third rounder next year. I, I don't, again, he's the GM, I'm not. So maybe he's got a plan, a great plan that everything's going to work out. And I'm going to hope for the best uh, in round three. But this is what we're working with. Love this move. This was smart. This was safe. This was the right way to go. Peter Skaronsky, yes, we are in the right direction. We just took two steps back this way. Okay, you got a quarterback. Who's he throwing to? Hopefully Traylon Burks and Kyle Phillips are healthy. Hopefully your O-line is able to give your quarterback protection. I, I'm not sold. I'm not sold, but maybe Rand Carthen knows what he's doing. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Who do you want the Titans to draft next? Remember, they traded back in the third round. They now have pick number 81 instead of 72. And in this draft, that is a lot of numbers to trade back when you need so many things to fix your roster, so many positions. Let me know down in the comment section who you want Brand Carthen, Mike Vrabel, and the Titans to go out and get. Honestly, it doesn't matter who you comment because they just do what they want anyway. Make sure to subscribe. We will keep you updated. You can be sure you will be hearing from me later on this evening. As always, we appreciate y'all for watching. Tighten up.